Okay. We were saying, why don't you just mint that coin, right. pay off our debt? Right. That right. was actually proposed by a, a liberal at Somebody some point. Somebody that ex- uh, understood economics. It was back economics. when we were doing the show in that little den. Oh, yeah. Remember I remember that. that? Yeah. That's about uh, how we've come a long way. Yeah. <laughs> we really we're come a long way. We're basement now. No, vetting. I want to talk about <laughs> vetting. They talk about vetting. We're going to vet these people. So, so uh, <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, good times. Good times. Good times. Uh, Vetting. What they mean by vetting everyone is what they're going to do is they're going to try to find out who they are and see if they're on any kind of watch list. That's it. The problem what else is, can they do? Well, the problem is they, these people don't have IDs. Right. A lot of them, the records no. are destroyed. There's a ton of or forged they never had records and things. Right? And there's forged stuff, so they have no idea who's coming across that border. The, no idea. Here's the deal. All you can do, and and. The government has admitted, The uh, was it the director of the FBI or whoever it was, has admitted, we don't have intel on these people because there's nothing to have. Right. If you can collect data all you want, but if they don't somehow make it on the radar, you're not going to have any any in- intel on them. You, you haven't collected anything. The definition of a sleeper cell, right, is that they don't do things to get on the radar, and Until the, it's time. And the sleeper cell ones are the most likely to have perfect, impeccable records and that's IDs. A, that's and all exactly that. my point. Yeah. Is that they that that's that's oh, how it works. Passport. Here it is. Is yeah. they do they they don't commit crimes, right? So they're going to look fine, and then one day they do commit but, a horrific. But it's crime. even beyond that. Let's say this. Let's say twenty percent of them are mass murderers and have been convicted of murder and rape and robbery. We don't have access to those records because some of them are destroyed. Yeah. I don't know if serious doing anything we don't even yeah, know these people are from right, syria right so we've got an unknown person yep uh, th- that we we have absolutely no idea yeah are we not going to let them in because that's you know 99 percent of the people coming across so how do you vet them and how do you vet you, you know can't. a 15 or 18 year old kid how many who of them be are a, there who could we, be because that's the other fanatic that's the other garbage that i'm hearing right is there you're talking about infants and widows Right, I think was it Obama? I think it was Obama. One of them specifically talking about the three-year-old. You're not going to let in the three-year-old orphan. How the hell did a three-year-old orphan get into our country? Did somebody bring the three-year-old orphan? Right. Is it not? But he a has, three-year-old orphan. I guess Come he hasn't. On. He hasn't seen the videos of the the three-year-olds being trained to cut off the heads of, yeah. of stuffed yeah. sheep. Yeah. Did you see that video? Yeah. Yeah. Good. It's horrible. Lord. Then they sp- they spilled uh, red. Uh, Food coloring around yeah. the, around the little stuffed sheep, you know, to look like blood and everything to desensitize. Them. Yeah, so that's happening. If you look at if you actually look at the numbers and not the crap that's coming out, something like sixty two percent or sixty four percent of the refugees are military aged men. Right, but they explain that away. Yeah, sure those, they do. Those are those are legitimate married men that are coming mm-hmm. into this country yeah. to get established and so oh. that they can send for their family. Okay, 62% of them are legitimate married men. Where are all the widows that he's talking about then? Yeah. Cuz that means that means a good percentage of the women we could go are we, probably married. We could go with the old-time nautical uh idea of just women and children. Yeah. And let them in. I mean, yeah, I no I, men allowed. I I will say that I don't by the fact that because they're a man of a certain age that they can't be a refugee. I don't buy that. No, I know. But right, be, but when you're talking be, about women, I mean, the argument is that it's widows and babies that we're not letting in or that we don't want to let in. Right. Right. But you talk 60 some percent are military aged men. That is not a widow or a baby. Right. It could be an orphan. Could be an orphan. But by that age, it doesn't matter, does it? Well, it matters to them. They don't have a mommy or daddy. Yeah. And, and that is sad. Yeah. yeah, I think that's So they sad. could be an orphan. So there they are, could be a 30-year-old orphan. There are a whole bunch of governors in states that are saying, hey, we're not going to we're they, not gonna let these in. They can't do it. It's not going to do any good, right? It's rhetoric. The law is, I think, on the president's side on this one, yeah. right? He he can determine who who needs asylum. Now, part of that process and is supposed is. to take into account a bunch of things like age and religion and those sorts of things, right? Nobody mentions that. But- I, I don't think so you there's mean much there's we can do. There's criteria involved. There, there is criteria. Yeah, oh. it's really weird. But if you don't know who the person are, is, how can you check that out? How can you? Yeah, how can you check it out at all? I, I, I if I were a, a Syrian terror sleeper cell, I would come across with a crucifix around my neck. There's something they, like three percent of the. They wouldn't let me in. Three 
three percent of the Christian refugees or something have been yeah. allowed in. Something yeah. ridiculous. So yeah. there is a seems to be a disproportionate amount of Muslims. Well, yeah, that's because uh, just based on maybe all population. The, maybe all the Christians have been murdered by who? The Muslims. The yeah, I mean, not all of them, of course. And I think I think a huge percentage of them of the the refugees are actually looking for something better. Really, and they're not really, terrorists. You think that's true? I do. Yeah, I think I it's do think probably ninety nine percent are. Are legitimate, but still, all you t- take yeah, yeah a, no right ten uh, you know a few thousand people to cause a lot of havoc. Well, in and, the they're, and they're they're throwing out these stats. The White House put out a bunch of stats today, and it's like so far we've let in a thousand or so refugees, and we've had zero problems. Right, but you're talking about another how many? Ten thousand at least, sixty thousand, a hundred thousand. Yeah, you've let in a thousand since. I thought it was ten thousand they wanted to let in. Or yeah, something. Uh, right. Right, in a short time. Well, this is what happens in a year from now or two years from now. Yeah, yeah that's why I said they started at 10,000 and they increased the, the number because that's how government works. Yeah, remember, uh, I think the Boston bomber, I don't know, were those refugees? Oh, oh, there you go. That's a good one, right? And, and Brian, some other. Brian, no. Those were... Um, Political? Uh, oh, what was it? Student, Shoot. Student visas? Uh, not acquired. What's the... Oh, what's they the word? Sold and bought? I don't know what you're trying to say. The, well, it was asylum. They were not refugees, but it oh, was... Uh, political asylum? I can't... Sort? It, um, not abstract, uh, like passed down. What's the word? Uh, I think it starts with an A. Darn it. Basically, I th- I think what happened with them is they inherited it from their parents or something. But Like, like they a legacy? Had, Kind of, but yeah. it was it was asylum, Brian, and there's a slightly different legal definition. Okay. They were not... A, a, a refugee like we're talking now so completely different yeah. they were still somebody from another country that we let in because we thought they needed our help right so it's exactly the same thing but the argument is oh it's kind of different and they were they were even more vetted than these people will be they were on a list yeah <laughs> we, knew we knew who they were they were they risky came from. Ugh. Uh, yeah Oh, all right, real quick, let because this has been on here. I mean, right. not this story, but all the time. Talk about civil asset forfeiture. Well, I just there's. Some, I know you want to. There's just some new data there. It says between 1989 and 2010, <laughs> U.S. attorneys seized an estimated 12 billion dollars in asset forfeitures, and those are where they take your money for drug-related crimes or not, where they can actually just take your money if they just think you might be a drug dealer and acquired that money. So that $2,000 you keep in your car to go antiquing, they find that. All they have yeah. to do is say, we think this is drug money. They take it. They don't even have to charge you. So anyways, the growth rate during that time was 19% annually. It grew every year, 19%. Jeez. 2010, it grew by 52%. 2009 was six times greater than the total of 1989. The point being... That now, according to the FBI, the total amount of goods stolen by criminals in 2014 burglary offenses suffered an estimated $3.9 billion in property losses, right? This means that the police are now taking more in assets than oh, the criminals are. Holy cow. So legalized theft. Yeah. The good news is there are places, including Michigan, sort of, who Crime are pushing back that. a little bit. Michigan's yeah. was like, uh, well, now they have to kind of maybe charge you with crime charge or something, crime, but, yeah. which is good. At least, right? And if it, and if and if it if they don't charge you or you're not convicted, you can get your money back. Yeah, maybe. for many places there, there's no recourse. Right. Yeah. So that is good that people that you know some states. But this are is what's going back. on in this country. They, they're stealing money from citizens under the guise of the war on drugs. I was going to say that, which is a war that's on you. The war on drugs, absolutely, is what that is. And we need to stop that. We need to legalize um, all drugs. But damn it, start with marijuana. Yeah, that would be an easy one, I think. Remember, so. the, you're more likely to die from a SWAT team shooting you, trying to arrest you for marijuana, than you are to die from the use of marijuana. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Yeah. It's sad, but it, it's true. Real quick, we're almost out of time. I want to mention one of our listeners reminded me that I think it was back to the Paris attacks. It was today oh, yeah. or last night. I, the time change messes me up. But they think that they killed the mastermind of those. They yeah. They killed like three people. Um, at least the woman, there was a woman, she blew herself up, said some weird things before she did it. Yeah. Uh, but they think they got the mastermind of that attack. I think it was shop at Kroger's. I don't think <laughs> there's no S on the end of Kroger's. Please stop it. It's Kroger. shop at Kroger. Yeah. And it's Meyer Walmart. Don't, don't tell me how to talk.
Why? Because <laughs> that'll happen. All right. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, happy Thanksgiving. See you next week. Bye-bye.